Well, Pixel 8 is the best compact phone on the market right now, and dare I say, the only Android phone you should be considering right now. It's so tiny and cute to use, the display now is flagship level, the cameras are top of the class, and it's all at an accessible price point of $699 USD, or even as low as $550 on sale. But that's not all. It's the smartest and most useful phone you'll ever use, which is why I want to uncover all the features that don't get talked about in a normal review and prove to you that this phone will change your life. I promise this video will be worth your time because over 220,000 of you loved this video last year, which I'm super grateful for. But anyways, for those of you who don't know much about this phone, let's quickly catch you up to speed with the new hardware. All right, the biggest change in my opinion that makes this phone so much better to use than its predecessors is the smaller form factor. Google really listened to the loyal fans who loved the form factor of the Pixel 5 and A series and gave the Pixel 8 a 6.2 inch screen with a 10 gram reduction in weight. That combined with the phone being less wide means one hand usability is much improved as you can actually reach all corners of a screen pretty easily, your pinky won't be tired after scrolling on your phone for a while, and you can actually use it in bed without making your arms tired. Although you probably shouldn't have this beside your bed and you should be reading instead. But anyways, speaking about the actual design, I love how the corners are much more rounded this year, making this phone look less blocky and much cuter. And especially with the camera bump that's an iconic part of what makes the Pixel a Pixel, the larger cameras this year make them stand out more in my opinion, which I like. Another standout feature that seriously fixes one of the biggest flaws of the previous phone is the increased brightness to a whopping 2000 nits, which matches all the top flagship phones like the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You won't ever have to struggle with visibility outdoors anymore, and with the new actual display technology, the screen just looks stunning with rich, vibrant colors that look good at every angle. And as a bonus, the screen refresh rate has increased to 120 Hz this year. The Pixel can actually go down to 60 Hz as well, and although it's not an LTPO panel, it should still bring some nice battery efficiency improvements. Another thing Google has worked on improving are the speakers, which everyone has been raving about. And while yes, they have improved over the Pixel 7 in a lot of ways, I personally feel like it's gotten worse in other ways which I'm not the biggest fan of. It sounds a lot more full and warmer with better bass response and a bigger soundstage, but the speakers do get a little distorted at max volume, and I just feel like the sound frequency is unbalanced with voices sounding muffled and drowned out, not to mention the earpiece being too quiet in my opinion. Not a total deal breaker though. Anyways, at least Google nailed down the biometrics, as the fingerprint sensor is super reliable now, even with a screen protector on, or for someone with dry fingers like me in the cold Canadian winter. New this year is also the face unlock, as Google has improved the security on it, so that you can now use it as biometric security in your secured apps like banking apps, which is a very useful and underrated addition to this phone. And finally, the Pixel 8 gets roughly a 200 mAh battery capacity bump from the Pixel 7, and although I wouldn't say the battery life on this phone is amazing after using it for over two months, I would say it's good enough to get you through the day with four to five hours of screen on time on average when I really use it outdoors. I do have a five SIM card on this phone, which is why the screen on time isn't that impressive, but if you mainly use it indoors on Wi-Fi or have a 4G SIM card, I'm sure you can significantly improve your battery life. Now that you guys are caught up on all the hardware updates, let's move on to all the software goodness, which was the whole point of this video. Before that though, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of this video, Pixel Academy from Android Intelligence, and don't skip because it's completely free and actually useful for you. If you're a tech nerd like me and love to learn about cool tips and tricks to make the most out of your Pixel devices, then you'll definitely want to check out the completely free Pixel Academy course created by the team over at Android Intelligence. It's a seven-day course that dives headfirst into all the useful hidden features and time-saving tricks for any Pixel device, whether it's a shiny new Pixel 8 or even an ancient Pixel 2 XL. You'll discover little-known knowledge that'll make your Pixel smarter, hidden camera tricks, advanced image magic, and all sorts of other next-level Pixel Pixel intelligence. And obviously, I don't want to spoil what's in the course, but I can assure you that all the tips are very useful and not just some generic tips that you'll find online. This is me speaking from personal experience after taking the whole course, and you'll regret not finding out about it sooner. And once you've finished the Pixel Academy course, you can let your inner nerd run free reading their Android intelligence, Windows intelligence, and cool tools newsletters, where you can learn even more cool tricks which I've been enjoying for over a year now. But anyways, make sure to use my link down below to sign up for the course, and again, it's completely free, no strings attached, so don't think twice and just do it. But enough talk, let's get back into the video. 
All right, as expected, where this phone really shines is in the software and AF features. And just a note, there are no differences between the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro. With the new third generation Tensor chip, there isn't much of an improvement in benchmarks, but what's noticeable is how snappy Android 14 runs on this phone now that all the softer bugs have been ironed out from the past two generation of Pixels. As usual, apps open up lightning fast, animations across the UI are very fluid, and I haven't noticed much stuttering or lagging if at all. Apps also stay open in the background most of the time, which means that you won't have to constantly reload your app when switching between them. And as for the software itself, I confidently believe that Pixel UI on Android 14 is the best software on Android without a doubt, regardless if you're on a shiny new Pixel 8 or an older Pixel. Also, crazy enough, Google is offering an unheard seven years of support for the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, which means that you'll continue to get the latest updates and features for the years to come. That's a very good incentive to buy the phone if you really want a phone to last, and a very smart move by Google. Anyways, Pixel UI is really simple to use, and I love the material you deem that forms around the color palette of your wallpaper since it makes the phone feel more fun and personalized. The animations, as I said, are absolutely beautiful, and the attention to detail just feels so polished. Not to mention, I think the always-on display looks the best out of any phone. Also, an underrated feature that's taken from the iPhone is being able to access the search bar when you open up the app jar which you can toggle through the home settings. And also, I love that when you're in the recent app view, you can actually easily screenshot the app you're in without using your buttons, and you can even select any text or images that wouldn't be able to be selected. But for my favorite feature, it's voice dictation, and it's incredibly cool. With this special voice dictation feature, Google is able to make transcriptions incredibly fast and accurate and all offline. It could even fix grammar mistakes, do auto punctuation, and even send by voice. But the best part is that it's integrated in the recorder app as well. So if you ever need to sleep in class or remember your thoughts that you'll for sure later forget in the day, just hit record and you'll end up with a transcript that you can search through later too. But it's not just for the audio outside the phone, this also works for the audio inside your phone too. They have this live caption feature that will generate captions for any speech that's playing in your phone, like Instagram reels that don't have captions or supposedly even phone calls. There's even an option to translate it into a few languages. Speaking of translation, there's also an interpreter mode, which I'm pretty sure most of you have seen on their ads already. It's super handy and amazing to see how much Google has improved the accuracy. There's actually a new Google Assistant coming out with Bard integrated in it, so it's gonna be like your personal chat GPT ready for you at all times. I'm really excited for that to roll out so I can finally try it out. The fun doesn't stop there though. There's a bunch of really useful features for the camera too. So first, there's face unblur, which takes data from both of the camera sensors to ensure that no faces are blurred, and also real tone, which aims to represent skin tones of all people, specifically those of darker complexities, to be as accurate and natural as possible. There's also Top Shot, which takes a few frames before and after you hit the shutter button. This is very useful because if there are any moving subjects that become blurred, you can actually select the frame at the exact moment you want. The real magic though comes from the magic eraser. No more asking who knows how to Photoshop in your friend group when someone photobombed your pictures. You can just open up the Photos app and boom, erase them from existence. It actually works pretty well most of the time and you can even camouflage anything into the background too that stands out too much by drawing over it. And finally, something really cool that I've actually used a lot is Photo on Blur. So although you can't take any blurry face pictures anymore with these phones, you can actually fix all your old blurry photos with just a tap of the button and it works surprisingly well. It's honestly amazing to be able to save all your nostalgic photos this way. As for the new features on the Pixel 8 series, there are two new editing tricks up its sleeve, and it's kind of cool. So first, Best Take aims to replace the faces of those who don't have the best pose in that particular photo by checking other similar photos taken at the same time. It only works though if you take multiple backup photos, but it works quite well in a pinch. Magic Editor, on the other hand, is an upgraded magic eraser in the way that you can erase anything you want in the picture, but you can also resize and move any object around that too. It's super fun to play around with, and best of all, they actually work with all your old photos regardless if you took them on the pixel or not, just like Face on Blur, and you'll for sure be spending hours playing around with all your old photos. And as for video, they also rolled out an audio magic eraser feature, which I'm just going to roll a clip for you guys to judge for yourself. Oh my god, this place is absolutely massive. Whoa. Damn. Oh my god, this place is absolutely massive. Whoa. Damn.
Those camera features are super neat, but that's not all. Remember when Apple announced car crash detection on the iPhone 14s last year and called it revolutionary new technology? Joke's on them, but Google has already had it for over four years now. You can also quickly call 911 with five presses of the power button, and you can share your location with your emergency contacts if you're going out alone at night. Good job, Google, for trying to keep your customers alive and healthy, because guess what? The phone has also become a parent that you'll actually listen to. It'll tell you to get your butt to bed with bedtime mode, rubbing your face that you've been on your phone for way too long, it'll get you off social media by locking you out, and tell you not to go on your phone while you're walking. The focus mode is especially useful too by blocking out notifications from distracting apps that you set, in addition to blocking you from even using the app, although you can cheat by giving yourself 5 minutes. As a student though, this is a lifesaver to make sure I don't start doom scrolling for hours and hours. And don't you dare say that you haven't done that before because that's cap. Finally, there are some other really cool features like call screening to block random annoying scam calls, hold for me which will tell you when the hours of held music is over and you actually get to talk to customer service, and now playing which tells you what song is playing in the background. And if you forget to check, there's also a history for all the songs that the phone recognized. No more trying to endlessly search up a song you only know the Melody 2, which admittedly happens a lot to me. Whew, that was a lot of features and the list just keeps growing and growing every year, so this video just keeps getting longer and longer. But hey, let me know down below what some of your favorite features are and if I've convinced you to join Team Pixel. The Pixel 8, despite some flaws, is just my most favorite phone that I've used this year and it's just refreshing carrying such a compact phone. And while it won't transform you from a couch potato to a productivity guru, the Pixel 8 will genuinely make your life both easier and better, which at the end of the day is really what a phone should do. Anyways, that's it for this video. Drop any questions you have for me down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for all the upcoming awesome videos. But anyways, have a good one guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.